When pigments like chlorophyll are struck by wavelengths of light, what tends to happen is that they do absorb the energy that's there, if it's the right color of light. So when light comes in and it strikes that pigment molecule, what happens is an electron becomes excited, or in other words, it becomes very unstable. And since it is so unstable, it's not going to stay there very long. So when it's here at this unstable state or this high energy state, if it's not captured or utilized very quickly, what's going to happen is it's going to fall right back down to where it was before. And if it does happen to fall right back down, there's going to be a loss of potential energy or a loss of energy. And that energy, um, for the most part, it tends to be lost as either heat. Sometimes this is also what we call autofluorescence. But in any case, it's going to be lost and it's going to be gone. So when we talk about photosynthesis, what we hope happens with the overall arrangement of the pigments inside the chloroplast is that when that electron gets very excited, there's going to be a molecule that's able to actually capture it and then pass that electron on further. Because the whole goal is that we want to take that um, light energy and then excite the electrons and transfer that energy into chemical energy. So let's take a look at a question. So in this question, it says that when chlorophyll is extracted in solution and a bright red or blue light is shown on it, the chlorophyll fluoresces brightly. And then when the chlorophyll is packaged inside the chloroplast and that same red or blue light happens to be turned on, there's no fluorescence. So the question is, why is there this difference between what happens when we have isolated chlorophyll versus when we have that chlorophyll inside the actual chloroplast? So if we go back to the first one and we think about this, if you just have the pigment by itself, and this is chlorophyll, and the light comes in and it shines on it, and so blue light, red light, which are two colors of light that chlorophyll itself is supposed to be very good at absorbing, the electron is going to get excited, but if there's only um, chlorophyll there, if there's no other structure for the chloroplast, then there is nothing, in this case, there's nothing to accept that excited electron. And so if there's nothing to accept that excited electron, what's gonna happen is it's gonna fall right back down. And when it falls back down, we're gonna get that energy released. So the energy will be released as fluorescence. And so it's going to be a lot of fluorescence from those chlorophyll molecules. Now in contrast, when we actually have the chlorophyll um, packaged in the chloroplast, there's a whole lot of other pigments there. There are also what we call electron acceptors. So the difference is that we will have our chlorophyll here. The light comes in. Again, it's red or blue light, which the chlorophyll is able to accept. And the electron gets excited again to that very high energy state. But this time, rather than just having it fall right back down to where it was before, there is going to be an electron acceptor. So another molecule sitting here in the chloroplast, which is going to actually grab that electron. So this one will collect the excited electron. And when it collects the excited electron, it's not gonna fall back down to that, what we would call the ground state, the low energy state. So if it's not falling back down, there's not gonna be any fluorescence released. So again, it has to do with the fact that the chloroplast are set up so that there are electron acceptors that can collect those electrons as soon as they're excited. If we're talking about individual pigment molecules, when the electrons are excited, if nothing's there to collect them, they're gonna fall right back down to that ground state and we're gonna see the energy released. That energy that's released is gonna be released as either heat or fluorescence.